All right, so I'm going to show a method you can use to find memory addresses. Um, this is assuming that you have checked both the general use spreadsheet that has common addresses that people use and the uh, ultimate spreadsheet, which has some of the more obscure ones. So I'm going to use BizHawk for this. Um, this is possible using other emulators with MHS, memory hacking software. Uh, but I prefer BizHawk only because the addresses are going to be in the same uh, same format as you would use on the practice from on hardware on VCR and 64. When you use other emulators, uh, the addresses aren't going to line up with hardware, and you're going to have to do some translating and deal with endianness in some cases, and it just it becomes pretty complicated. So with BizHawk, uh, it's always going to be the same, and it's always going to translate to hardware nicely. This method of searching RAM is nice when you have information about what you're looking for. So in this specific case, I'm going to be using the health for King Dodongo. And I know that Katie's health uh, will start at 12, and it will decrease by 2 when he eats a bomb. I also know the damage values of the different weapons. So I know that the Kokiri sword with a normal slash will do 1, and a jump slash will do 2. So using those facts, um, it can be pretty simple to actually search for this address. So I'm going to head over to Tools and then open RAM Search, which is right here. It's going to open up a new window. I'm going to actually pause the game real quick. Um, now in this window on the left side, it's going to show just addresses and their values. Um, right now it's showing all of RAM because I haven't done any searching yet. And on the right side, there are a few different um, sections. So compared to, uh, you can set uh, the value you're looking for or a specific range. So in the compare to section, I'm gonna put specific value since I know exactly uh, what KD's health will be at what time. In comparison operator, I'm gonna use equal to because I know exactly what value it is. Uh, the other options can be useful when you don't know as much about what you're looking for. Uh, so you can do like less than or greater than to like get an idea instead of an exact value. And in this bottom section, um, you have to kind of use prior knowledge about how other values are stored in order to help you guess what it could be. Um, in this case, I know that health is a pretty small value. It's only going to be 12 and it goes down to zero. So it wouldn't really make sense for that value to be four or two bytes. So I can assume that it's one. And for the display, uh, this doesn't matter too much. Um, in this case, I know Katie's health in decimal, and the health can't be negative, so unsigned would make most sense here. Um, if a value could be negative, you'll use signed, or you can just look at it in hex. So what I'm going to do is resume the game and start this safe state I have at the beginning of the fight, pause the game, and I'm going to set that specific value to 12. Since I know that this is Katie's health always at the beginning of the fight, searching for one byte unsigned equal to 12. Search. And now you'll see on the left it's been updated and it pulled up 36,000 different addresses. And this is way too many to look through and guess which one it is. Uh, so we have to narrow it down. So every search from here on out is going to search for whatever value you're looking for within the subset of the previous search. So the next search is only going to look for the specified value of the previous addresses that were returned. So I'm going to resume the game. I'm going to throw a bomb into Katie's mouth, and this will decrease his health by two. So I'll do that. It'll explode. I'll pause the game. And now I know that Katie's health has gone from 12 to 10. So I'm going to change specific value to 10, press search, and now of those 36,000 addresses, only 7 actually changed to 10 when I threw a bomb in Katie's mouth. So I can do the same process over again, resume the game, and this time just do a normal slash with the Kokiri sword, and this will decrease the value to 9. So uh, I can search for a specific value of 9, search and I'm left with one. And just to make sure, uh, you can right click and do add to RAM watch 
which we'll add it to this window here. Just to make sure that I found the right one, I'm just going to resume. And I'm going to do the same thing. And just watch the value. So it's at 9 right now. It should decrease to 7 when I throw a bomb. And it does do a jump slash, decreases to 5, so it is the right one. And so now I have the uh, the address for King Dodongo's health. And now uh, if you wanted to show this on the practice ROM in the uh, RAM watch menu, this address translates to hardware exactly. The only difference is you need to add 80 to the start. So the address would be 801ECB75. And on the practice ROM, unsigned one byte is represented by U8 for the size. So just to show another example, I've got this Tektite here in Lake Hylia, and I'm going to search for its health also. Um, I know that Tektites have 4 health, they die to a Master Sword Jump Slash, uh, or 4 Kokiri Sword Regular Slashes. So I'm going to set the size and display to 1 byte unsigned, just like before, because it's a similar value to KD's health. And I'm going to search for 4. Now there's probably going to be a ton of 4s in like Hylia search, yeah 47,000 addresses so we're going to have to narrow it down. Um, a trick I like to use also is that if I resume the game and change stuff like move around and make the tech type move and everything, if you just keep searching for 4 because you haven't hit them yet, you'll narrow out some addresses even though you haven't changed the tech type because other values are changing in RAM so you'll narrow some down. Anyway, um, I will do a normal slash on the tech site. If I can turn around. Alright, did I even hit him? <laughs> okay, hit him once, and now I will pause and search for three. Oh, that was quick. Okay, so we've got two. Just to be sure, uh, I'll do a jump slash to bring him down to one. and search for one and we've got one left so can add that to ram watch resume he should die on this next hit it goes to zero i can load the save state back it'll go back to four one two three four you can load it again and do jump slashes instead if you want and it's correct so uh, that's a method you can use to find addresses. Um, it's important to note that if you're going to take this address and move to hardware, um, when you're finding variables related to actors, they may not be in the same RAM location every time. Um, these actors get loaded and unloaded in different orders depending on what's already there and other factors. So it might not be as simple as it seems to just use that same address every time. But if you use the practice ROM to load into the area in the same way under the same conditions, then there's a good chance that the address will be in the same location. So I hope this is helpful. Um, this method works great for finding some addresses and not so much for others. Um, and you can definitely go much deeper with this. Um, you can use tools like the hex viewer to actually see values in a certain area and see if you can find it manually in that way um, and there are other methods too but this can help you out if the address you're looking for isn't documented and you can see if you can find it yourself uh, if you have any questions just let me know in the OOT discord and I or someone else will help to the best of our ability